Hi, Craig Lockhart. I'm back, and uh, let's get into this thing. Let's 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 talk about recruiting and 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 how the ins and outs of this thing. You know, uh, when I first started in the car business, uh, it was you know it was it was pretty interesting. Typically, all that was hired were you know retreaded guys from other dealerships. They screw up, do something wrong, or you know, it was the old three Ds, you know, they got their demo draw or day off taken away from them. And uh, so they look for another dealership. So, you know, it was like word of mouth, you'd call and it was just constant stealing people back and forth. Same guys retreaded all over town. Um, and I saw something that, that, that uh, came about, it was really, I don't know, brought about probably 40 plus years ago in New Jersey. And, and I will get back to that somewhere later in the series on the, on the process that we kind of use, but that got me into this and, 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 and started developing the processes that we have today. But I, I think it's important that we look at the, the, we start at what's really important. I think too often, let, let, me, let me tell you to you this way, uh, NADA, a lot of automotive conferences, they're full of uh, technology, CRM information, third-party lead information, internet information, video information, 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 how to sell more cars, how to service more cars, on and on and on and on and on. Now, I speak at a lot of these, but I don't speak at all of them. And I'm, and I'm not looking to speak at all of them. I mean, that'd be awesome, but, but I'm not. But I find it interesting that there isn't at least a representative, one representative, that has anything to do with staffing or recruiting people into dealerships. You folks can throw all the money that you want to at all the shiny new objects that, that are available to you. Just, you know, thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, a million dollars, depending on the size of the group. And that's awesome. And that's fine. But when it comes right down to it, somebody's got to be pushing those buttons. Somebody's got to be answering the phone. Somebody's got to make it happen. Regardless of where this business is headed, there's always going to be a person or persons involved in the transaction at some point. There has to be, and there always will be. And the dealership that understands that and un truly understands that your human capital really has the biggest offering of ROI and any other dollar that you can spend. And I think you got to start there. We, as an industry, have to get our, our minds around how important our people are. I see dealerships just blow through people. Just, why? Because there's another one right behind them. Well, you know, if you're going to retain your customer, and customer retention is horrible at dealerships. And I'm not going to go into a bunch of percentages because you all you can look them up and there's a million different ones. But let's say let's say we're retaining 20%. I mean, you know, shame on us. But wouldn't you agree, to some degree, that our the, the retention or lack thereof of our internal customers, our employees, our human capital, is directly related to the retention of the people that, that do business with us, our clientele, our, our, our customers. If you keep wheeling new people in and out of that building over and over and over again, it's going to be a problem. You know, um, I happen to buy all my clothing for the last, I lived in New Jersey 20 years, and for almost 20 years, I bought all my clothes from the same, all my suits, shirts, everything from the same guy, men's warehouse. Same guy. Really good salesman. Men's warehouse salesmen are great salesmen, in my opinion. I think they have a really good process. And they're, they're people, they seem to be people of good character. And they really care about their customers. So every time I walk in there, it's kind of funny. I, don't, I have a few quirks, and I don't like to shop that much. So it's like, man, bang, I'm in and I'm out of there. But it's like about, I don't know, six months ago, uh, I was making of this video. Uh, I walked in the store and he's no longer there. So I asked somebody, I asked him where he was at, and he had retired. And I felt lost. It was like, what am I going to do? How, how am I going to buy a suit? I mean, this guy literally, I'd come in, 
And I'm not kidding you. I'd be out of there in less than 20 minutes with, you know, two suits, ties, shirts, socks, belt, <laughs> the whole nine yards, and I'm out of there. Because he knew what I wanted. He knew me. And now, here's the thing. If it wasn't Men's Warehouse, and they're almost carbon copies of each other. I mean, they're really, they step up and someone else embraced me and said, look, I know you've done business with him for a long time and, and, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take care of you from here on out and you're in good hands. If, if they hadn't done that, I'd probably go look somewhere else. I'd probably go look somewhere else. I was locked into that store, that business, because of one person and one person only. I could go anywhere to buy my clothes, but I chose to go there because of him. How many deals are we losing? How much service are we losing? What, what is our loss by losing our employees over and over and over again and having that turn and churn? So on the next video, I want to talk about when's the right time how many and, and really why and look at this thing from maybe a different angle. So I'll see you on the next one.